It's the halfway stage of the 2019 Formula 1 season and all eyes are on the centre of the world on a former RAF base where 70 years ago the sport began. Welcome home to Silverstone. Welcome to the 2019 British Grand Prix. We move away from the dramatic and brilliant Austrian Grand Prix to the halfway stage of the season, the centre of the world and the centre of the country. It's Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. It's round 10 of the season. We've already had nine different races, three different winners. Max Verstappen was the first to break the Mercedes dominance. Two weeks time with the German Grand Prix at the Hockenheim before a week later the Hungarian Grand Prix for the summer break. Then we're back at the end of August and early September for the Belgian Grand Prix. Italy serves as round 14, the last stop on the European calendar, before Singapore, Russia, Japan, the Americas with Mexico, United States and Brazil. And we all round out on the 1st of December in Abu Dhabi. In terms of the Drivers' Championship, Lewis Hamilton leading the way, 197 points. His fifth place in Austria was his worst of the season. Bottas is closing him down. Verstappen is now the next up as well. And if you look down, still no points for George Russell or for Robert Kubica. And that means in terms of the Constructors' Championship, Williams still have no points coming into their home race on the anniversary of their first win 40 years ago. Haas F1 on 16, they're battling with Toro Rosso and Racing Point and Alpha. Renault and McLaren still battling it out. Ferrari and Red Bull still in the midst of their own because Mercedes are dominant in 2019. And alongside me this weekend as well is two people, first of which... A man who has seen every sporting event ever broadcast on television by any current broadcaster. He's has got life stories throughout the past 20 years and he can talk hours on them. It's our father, it's Ian Birch. Good afternoon, Dad. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. It's nice and sunny. And alongside as well, making a return to the Formula One racing circuit after two races as well, a girl who can just look at a timing screen and can predict a team strategy. A girl who also is the only person who, in a commentary box, actually physically hurts me by digging her nails under my shoulders. It's welcome back, Megan. Hello, Megan. Or oh, whacking him. That's pretty much either. Right, welcome to you both. Let's start with the British Grand Prix. Silverstone till 2024 as well. The BRDC and FOM announced that agreement. Uh, Silverstone has also been resurfaced for the second year running following the cancellation of the British Grand Prix of MotoGP. So first of all, Dad, to you, British Grand Prix for another five, six years, not bad at all. Well, it's, it'd be anywhere else other than Silverstone and I don't think it'd be the same. But I've, I've seen it at Donington and I've seen it at Brands, and the great tracks, but no, no. No, no Silverstone is now the home of the British Grand Prix. And as for the resurfacing, don't they think they missed a chance? Yes. They could actually have, <laughs> instead of dumping all that tarmac, they could have sold it off. Yeah, exactly, and it's been resurfaced twice down the past three years. Yeah, and that's because of the MotoGP, which we spent six hours watching, and it was raining all the time. You can see that Megan's tapping me. Megan, what's your question? No, it's just, I want to say what I think of tarmac. Well, we've been resurfaced again, and is that going to be a good thing or a bad thing? A bad thing because the heat will not make it dry quick enough, and also the tyres will lose their surface grip. Yep, we've seen that the tyres this year are already playing a factor. It's. I don't think it's likely to rain, but if it rains, you know, I when I've ever driven on wet new tarmac, um, it's so slippery. Yeah, so that could be another bit of exciting thing. Right, moving on to Rich Energy. And they said um, a tweet. Yeah. If, if you want a point of that, just, yeah, ask, just ask Johnny Herbert about uh, a certain car. I think even the clutch came out, the clutch paint. Came out. Yeah, this afternoon in the driver hot laps of F1, Johnny Herbert lost his Williams, yeah. lost his McLaren, sorry, and put it in the gravel down at Chapel. Right, moving on. Rich Energy announced yesterday via Twitter that uh, today Rich Energy terminated our contract with Haas F1 for poor performance. We aim to beat Red Bull Racing and being behind Williams Racing in Austria is unacceptable. unacceptable. They then went on to say the politics and PC attitude in F1 is also in inhibiting our business we wish the team well it's important to note as well that the logo of rich energy was recently uh, filed as copyright to a bicycle company of white bikes so that they've got to get rid of the car but it's all seemed a bit of a sham as they've come out this morning and said nope they're still our sponsor what's your reaction well and the under american law which is has the things that you know there they signed a contract 
And um, you can't, in Formula One, once you sign a contract for the whole season, it's generally seen as being the whole season. If they went to court, then I feel that um, that would be used as an excuse by Haas to keep them in their contract. And they should honour their contract. The truth of the matter is, it's not to do with performance, yeah. right? It's to do with the fact that uh, they just it just hasn't worked out for them and they want to get out of it. And um, I think Jean Haas should let them go. Exactly, I think she too. Megan, your reaction on this? Because we've been talking about the whole Rich Energy scandal. Um, better off without them in Formula 1? Yeah. Oh, that's simple. Right, let's go on then. First of all, it's 40 years since Williams first won a Grand Prix, the 1979 British Grand Prix. I don't think Red Bull will mind them going, do you? No, I don't think Red Bull will either. Because they're a rival drinks firm, aren't they? They are, yeah. The UK's well, premium. Gene, Gene has made all his money from, um, from tools, making tools. Mm. And so, you know, he's, an early, he, he's a billionaire, so, you know, he should be able to promote. Why do not he get his, you know, it's a tax write-off after all for some yeah. of it. So why don't he just get involved um, with his own team? He ha he does in NASCAR. Yeah, he does indeed. Uh, yeah, and that's a good point, actually. Why didn't he just do his own thing? He was there in 2016, but disappeared after. Uh, right, it's time for Lap Attack with the track guide of the British Grand Prix, and with it being 40 years since Williams first won a race, we've took their most dominant car around the track on the F1 2019 Codemasters Games. It's the Williams FW14B. <laughs> 40 years since Williams first won a Formula One Grand Prix event back in 1979. This Sunday will be the anniversary, so let's go round. In the most classic Williams of them all, the 1992 FW14B, which won Nigel Mansell, the 92 title. Down to turn one, Abby, a right-hander, very quick, very fast, coming into farm, and then into turn three, the heaviest braking point on the track for Village. Tight as we go on to the new section, which was created back in 2010 into turn four of the loop before coming on to turn five which is entry which leads on to the first straight the wellington straight before coming and rejoining the original grand prix track hard down past the brdc into brooklands now it's a bit more looser than what it used to be before coming into Luffield now flat out at the exit really booted hard as you come into woodcut onto the old start finish straight which is still used for the british touring cars and the moto gp as you head down towards cops corner one of the most greatest corners on formula one's calendar then you join into the most famous section of all into maggots first of all and then beckett as well a light build break down one gear break down another gear as you come into beckett you can as a racing driver you can get that corner right once a weekend chapel now leads on to the hangar straight named so because when this was ref silverstone it used to be the hangar straight where you have all the planes Coming now to Stowe Corner. Schumacher broke his legs here in 1999, 20 years ago. I was out for half the season. Coming down now into Vale, the chicane on the back half of the circuit before the last corner, the double barreled entrance to club. It's a lot more scary than what it used to be. And across the line to complete a lap of Silverstone here at the greatest race on the planet, the British Grand Prix. And this year as well, we've got a lot more drama to look forward to. What a race we've got here. Welcome home. Welcome to Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. So the press conference was this afternoon as well, and Dad, you were watching more of the press conference. Anything interesting happened there? Yeah, Lando Norris cried <laughs> with laughter. Yeah, most important. Uh, Lewis started talking about his moustache not, and not being able to grow it any further than I can. Um, and no offence. No, 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 no. I was the new guy. Um, but, <laughs> you know... And then, you know, Danny Rick started yeah. and, you know, there was a few things said behind so that it couldn't be heard properly. But they forgot they've got mics across the things. And, you yeah. know, basically it was about Nigel's moustache and um, mm. and um, then Lewis wanted to grow a goatee beard or something. And then and, and they said, well, we'll get stick on once. And I think Ricardo mouthed where. <laughs> you where know, can stick and on? That, that just sent them all going. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, weekend predictions then for the Friday practice sessions. Uh, it looks to be similar to today, cloudy with chance of rain. Uh, first of all, Megan, who do you think will top uh, in practice tomorrow? I know, on the spot there, go on. You're good at these. People love you for these. Leclerc. 
Yeah. Claire, okay, Dad, what about you? Um, bet- Valtteri or Lewis um, will want to get back after the last race yeah. into winning forms and, and things like that. Lewis is always very strong in practices, and so is Sebastian. So between Sebastian and Lewis. Excellent. Well, thank you, you two. You can now leave and go either side of me. I don't know where you're going. But uh, Megan's already off. Dyke I'm going. Bye. Goodbye. Right. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 o'clock for the Friday uh, practice review. Saturday at 1.30 for the third practice review. An extended Sunday race preview show as well with a special feature for Sir Frank Williams as well on the 40th anniversary of the team's first win as well. That's why I'm wearing a Williams shirt. We'll be filming that as well. Megan and Dad with us throughout the weekend as well for the British Grand Prix. It's going to be a crazy weekend as well. Hamilton leaves the title, Valtteri Bottas begins to close him down, but have Mercedes now been dethroned? Red Bull won in Austria. What is going to happen? Join us tomorrow to find out what happened in practice. But for us all here, it's bye for now.